Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina, and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels over there and living a more intentional life. And sometimes I make videos about this uh, Ram Promaster camper van that I converted with a no build, minimal build, build out last summer in 2021. So I have had a ton of questions from you. Oh, sorry, I'm shaking the van, <laughs> which is shaking the camera. I have had a ton of questions from you about my heater. So I thought today was a good day to discuss it. I've been sort of holding off on this video because I really wanted to interview Ian from the company that, uh, this, the rep that I dealt with, from the company that I bought it from. But we were supposed to do it a couple of weeks ago, but he was down. He's recovering uh, with his family. So what I thought today I would do is just give you the basics, show you where I got it, um, how it works. We'll go outside and I'll show you the exhaust pipe, that sort of thing. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how I found it, how much it cost me, why I decided to go with this one in particular. And then when Ian is feeling better, then um, we're going to actually go to his shop here in Calgary, Alberta, and uh, talk more about heaters in general for van life and um, the more technical aspects of it, maintenance, that sort of thing. In the meantime, I wanted to give you something. So this will be van heater part one. I'm sorry if I am shaking the van and shaking the tripod because it's not very stable. Uh, but anyways, and I don't know if you can hear the birds outside, but they are loving this weather. It's actually really nice here in Calgary right now. It's plus eight degrees Celsius, which is unheard of for this time in February. But we're not complaining because I certainly do enough complaining when it is very cold. So first of all, I want to talk to you about how I found my heater, why I decided to go with a heater, that sort of thing. I actually did take the van out several times last summer uh, after I had it usable um, to on some camping trips and uh, a couple of times it got quite chilly in the evening, not below zero, below freezing for us here in Canada, um, but cold enough that I was chilly in here and I knew that if I was going to have this as a usable van uh, year round or certainly three seasons of the year, I wanted a heat source in it um, and I wanted a dry heat source. I never actually considered going with a propane heater, one of those like a Mr. Buddy that you see a lot of um, van lifers use as sort of a occasional solution uh, because Propane, I, first of all, I, I worried about having a propane heater inside the van um, where you were using the small propane bottles versus something that's like in an RV where um, you're, you have like a big propane tank. That's, that's not what I mean. Um, but I meant like one of these propane heaters like the Mr. Buddy um, because I worried about the, having the propane, the small propane uh heater going inside the van. They need a lot of clearance around them and pr mostly because they release a lot of moisture into the air and um, moisture is your worst enemy inside the van. So um, I did not want that as my solution. I always planned on investing in a forced air heater for the van. So what did that mean for me? That meant that I wanted to go with something that um, was small enough to work with the van um, and that was not a propane. Traditionally, the most uh, common forced air heat sources, forced air furnace sources for camper vans, things like that, are um, the S-bars, S-bar, S-par, s doesn't matter. <laughs> the Wabasto and the there's a lot of knockoffs that you can buy from Amazon. I'm sure that if you are interested in uh, 
van life and converting a van that you've already seen lots of videos by people who have worked on their own vans who have purchased these uh, knockoff heaters uh, Chinese diesel heaters uh, from Amazon they are very inexpensive um, and they are the solution that a lot of people go with because they're very affordable. The Wabastos, the S-Bars are very expensive, but the quality is also very, very good, but they're an investment. So those were the options that I thought I had. Um, I actually did order one from Amazon. I didn't even open the box. I sat there staring at it for the longest time. These Chinese knockoffs are all diesel, diesel heaters which means that if your vehicle isn't a diesel vehicle, that means you need a separate fuel container for your diesel. This ProMaster is gasoline fueled. Um, so I thought about that for the longest time. I knew that I could get a, uh, an S-Bar, S-Bar, what is it? S-Bar. <laughs> I knew I could get an S-Bar forced air heater uh, that was gasoline powered. I wasn't sure about a Wabasto. I never actually uh, talked to uh, a distributor for Wabasto, but here in Calgary, I knew I could get a, an S-Bar. But again, they were uh, $3,400 for the heater. Plus, in, plus installation, because I'm not installing this myself. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I've said before in other videos that I will do all sorts of things myself. I will tackle cutting a hole in the roof for that fan. I will tackle cutting holes in the walls for these windows. I will uh, put in a swivel seat. I will do an awful lot inside this van, but I wasn't comfortable doing anything that might get me killed and uh, tying into the gas tank for a heater was not something I was qualified to do or had any uh, urge to try myself. So I knew this was something I was going to have installed. I belong to a couple of ProMaster groups on Facebook and um, one of the posts on there was about heaters for your van and um, I they were in Calgary and they were talking about how they got their heater but it wasn't an SPAR. So I messaged them and said, you know, where did you get it? And they told me about this company. They directed me to this company here in Calgary, and it's actually in Canada. I know there's one in Vancouver, they're across Canada, called Polar Mobility Research Limited. I will put the link down below in the show notes. They have a location here in Calgary. I phoned them up and I talked to a really nice fellow there. And um, because I had been on their website, and I looked and they had the S-Bars. Um, and I don't know much about these heaters. So got to talking to him and he mentioned that they also are a distributor for General Components. Now you may have heard of General Components if you follow um, Van City Van Life or um, his friend Jeffy Bear who had a problem with his Chinese diesel heater and just had one of these put in. So Polar Mobility is a distributor um, and they distribute heating and cooling systems to, uh, for RVs, for transport trucks, for the, the, the little uh, sleeping cabs, for transport trucks, for vans. The, that's where their, their heating and cooling systems are, are targeted to. So they sell SBAR, but they also uh, and, and a lot of other things, but they also are a distributor for General Components. General Components is a Canadian manufacturer. I'm not exactly sure if the heaters are made in Canada, but they are a Canadian manufacturer and distributor. Um, and Polar Mobility is a, dis you can't buy directly from General Components. You have to buy through one of their distributors and a Polar Mobility Research Limited is their distributor. Um, here in Canada. I don't know if other companies distribute them, but Polar Mobility does. So he told me about their heaters. They are a fraction of the price and they have a model that is gasoline powered. So that's what I went with. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So the general components heater that I got 
is a 12 volt gas powered one and it's a two kilowatt heater <laughs> now do i know exactly what that means not really but it, it was the one that he recommended for the size of the van and that's what i got the general components heater was uh it's not on my, uh, I, I, the quote that I have and the receipt that I have is for the heater and the inst install and doesn't have them separate. But I've got a note that it was $1,100 for the heater. So that's what it, that's where it is, $1,100. I'm pretty sure it was $1,100 for the heater and all of the components that come along with it. And then I had it installed. So it ended up costing me um, $1,850 to have this heater purchased and installed plus tax because I'm in Canada and we have GST. Um, so that's expensive, but that's still half the price of the SPAR and that included the installation. So that was for the heater, all of the components for it, the uh, fuel filter, everything, and then the labor to have it installed, mounted to the floor and have it tied into my get my van's fuel tank for me money very well spent yes it was expensive remember these are canadian dollars so if you're in the u.s <laughs> that would probably be something like 1300 or something like that but in canadian dollars that's what it cost me um, so an investment uh, the most expensive thing that i put into the van so far has been this heater but it was something that was very important for me to have in here because now I can use this three seasons probably four seasons depending on how cold it gets outside uh, but right now the van isn't fully insulated so I probably wouldn't take it out when it was that cold but I could easily have this sucker out in a minus 10 um, and feel quite comfortable I have been in it overnight when it was minus 8 Celsius and the heater was fantastic and I'm quite confident that it would keep me warm even colder um, so that's what I have in the van I have a uh, general components bison series two kilowatt gas heater and uh, it's a it's a air heater I love the fact that it is a dry heat and it will help also dry things out in here if I'm cooking, things like that. Um, and it's very nice and toasty. The only downside, the only complaint I have about this heater <laughs> is the fact that the display is really uh, disappointing. Um, and I was talking to him about why couldn't we get an aftermarket display controller that was, you know, backlit you know one of those nice ones that you see on all the Chinese diesel heaters that you get from Amazon they all have these nice displays it's workable uh, but we're gonna look into to maybe getting uh, a, another display another controller um, connected that I can have mounted by the bed and have the other one tucked away for if there's ever a problem and um, I need to figure out what error code we're talking about so I'm going to show you now where I have it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick sort of visual of where I have it mounted. Um, and then I'm going to take things apart so you can actually see what it looks like. I'm going to give you a, look, a good look at the controller. We'll go outside and I'll show you the exhaust. Um, and then when Ian is feeling better, <laughs> when he's all recovered, from his bout with the Rona, uh, then we will do a more technical discussion about this heater, other heater options, how to maintain it, that sort of thing. So let me just show you where I have it set up right now. now. You'll see what I mean when I say it's really a disappointing controller. Now, I do appreciate that it is low tech, but seriously, uh, this is just not comparable to any of the other displays, uh, controller displays that I've seen. So you really just press the on button. And then you can see that there's a little, um, little wavy lines for heater and you just press okay. And now the heater will turn on. So to control the heat, it's just as simple as up and down. So you can see why 
even in the dark, I'd be able to see this. You can program it. You can set it to a timer, all sorts of things like that. Because I haven't put uh, walls in or anything like that, uh, what we've done is we've just left the cabling loose and just zip tied it so that there's lots of uh, room and then I just put a little zip tie here to hold it in so that it's close to the bed. And then for my setup, let me just come back. This is how I have it. So beside my bed, I have this drawer unit here that I keep my clothes in and stuff when I'm camping. Um, and the heater is actually underneath it. So what I did was, uh, in the, and in that IKEA video that where I showed the IKEA products that I've used in the van, there was this little uh, lap desk that I bought there. And the heater is underneath that. And I put this on top so that I could use the space for this drawer unit. And then the vent for it comes out. I just zip tied it to the wall here to hold it. And then here's the vent. Uh, it's long and I haven't trimmed it back because I don't know where I'm going to have this coming out once I do build a little bench seat here. So let me pull this off and show you what the heater looks like underneath. <laughs> Oh, I hope you appreciate how much work that was. Um, okay, so what we got here, I'll bring you just a little closer. Um, it's not a big uh, unit. This will take in fresh air from the inside the cab, warm it up, blow it out into the, cab, the van. It'll get its air for the combustion from outside the van and obviously it exhausts outside the van. So that's what it looks like. Again, it's not very big. So this, these things don't take up a lot of room. Um, and you can basically put them anywhere you want. I didn't want it underneath my passenger seat. That's a long ways for it to be for the, uh, you know, the heat output vent to be from the bed. <laughs> and I'm going to need the heat mostly when I'm tucked into bed at night. I knew that I was going to have a bench or some sort of a cupboard here, um, a seat of some sort, something like that. So it could be tucked underneath and it doesn't get really hot. The, uh, the heat output does, obviously it, it pumps out quite a bit of heat, but the heater itself doesn't get really hot. All you need to do is make sure that you have uh, fresh air uh, coming in and it's inside air that's coming in uh, so that it can heat it and pump it out. I'm going to put this all back together um, and let's go outside now and I'll show you the exhaust on it. I'm going to turn it on so we can hear how loud it is outside. All right, now the exhaust for the heater is not on this side. It's over on the other side, so let's walk around. Let me get down there to show you. There is the exhaust for the heater. So there's the exhaust. And you can follow it around to where it goes up into the van. I'm not going to pretend that I fully understand all the mechanics of it, which is why I really wanted to have Ian talk to you and explain the mechanics, the actual technical pieces of using this heater in your van conversion. They supply these for RVs, for truckers who sleep in their transport trucks for boats and for camper van conversions. That's where their market is and that's where they, they sell their products to. Polar Mobility Research Limited here in Calgary, uh, across Canada, I will link their website down below. But keep in mind that I do plan on having him on the channel so he can discuss 
the specifics of choosing your heater, what types of heaters are available, the differences in the quality. Lately, it seems like I have seen so many videos of van life people who have installed one of these Chinese diesel heaters in their vans and they have been having issues with them. Um, and unfortunately, so many of the people that are having the issues are in some pretty cold climates or having some, you know, really cold snowstorms, winter storms, and their heaters haven't stood up. Now, the fact is, um, and I think Van Life Plus, Matt from Van Life Plus said it, because he was having a lot of issues with his heater and the fuel filter and just issues. And his broke down at some of the coldest uh, nights that we've had here in Calgary, because he's in Calgary and he lives in his van full time with his two cats, <laughs> um, Stella and, can't remember the other one's name. Sorry, Stella. It's another uh, really cute name. And he made a good point. The fact is he only spent a few hundred dollars on it. He installed it himself. Even if he has to replace it a couple of times, it still doesn't come up to the cost of one of these Wabasto or S-bars. Um, and that's very true. But there's the um, convenience factor. There's also the confidence factor, knowing that you have a heater that you can count on no matter what. And in my case, I really wanted to know that if something went wrong, there was someone I could go to, some place I could go to, and have them diagnose the problem, fix the problem. It does have a two-year warranty, um, and I have confidence in the company that I bought it from and the people that installed it because they are experts. So I know that this thing is safe, and I love that it's tapped into the gasoline tank versus a separate diesel tank because I would have had to, like Matt does, have to, I would have had to have had uh, a standalone diesel container inside the van to fuel this and I really didn't want to. <laughs> it's getting a little cold out here, uh, but I'm almost done. Another question you might be asking is how am I powering this thing because I don't have an electrical system yet for the van. Uh, I don't have solar, I don't have uh, a separate leisure battery, you know, I do eventually do want to put solar up on the roof and get a, a, a lithium battery to power lights and all of the things inside. Right now what I use are my standalone battery uh, banks. I have a Jackery and a different one and I can never remember its name, <laughs> but I'll put those down below as well. Um, so I don't have an electrical system, so how am I powering this? So this is also tied to the house battery in the van, so my starter battery. I did express my concern to Ian about that, and he, he assured me that they use very little uh, power when they're running. And obviously the controller it doesn't use it a whole lot. It's a 12 volt system, but they use very little power. And I did test this. I filled up my gas tank. I ran that heater all night as high as it could go because it was a cold night. And the next morning, the fuel uh, gauge was still on full and the van started up absolutely no problem. They use very little power and they're very fuel efficient, which is awesome. Um, because gasoline is very expensive, but then again, so is diesel. So eventually I will have an electrical system. It will be tied into that. But for now, because I just wanted to get it in so that the van was usable in the colder weather, for now it is hooked to the um, house battery of the van and it runs on the gasoline from the gas tank. And it's so far been super efficient easy to use. The only complaint I have is that that display is really disappointing. It's functional and it certainly works um, and it was easy to figure out. It's not as big, it's not as well lit, it's not colored like all the other ones that I see, the Wabasto, the S-Bar and all those Chinese diesel heaters. We're going to see if there's some way to um, install a second controller, keeping the main one still functional and attached so that if there is ever a problem, we can read the error, error codes. I hope that that helps 
answer some of your questions. Uh, I know a lot of you have been asking and I have been promising and the reason it's taken so long, like I said, is because poor Ian got sick. As soon as he feels up to it, we're gonna go into the shop so that you can meet him, you can get a sense of who they are, um, so that if you want to have somebody install your heater for you, if you want to order one of these general components heaters, you'll know who to go to if you're in Canada. The way I see it is they're in between the Chinese knockoffs that so many people lately have been having issues with, but a lot of people don't. And the higher, the high end S bars and Wabastos that are um, beautifully made and super reliable, uh, but just really expensive. And this seemed like the perfect solution for me. The next heater vi video will be that interview with Ian from uh, Polar Mobility. And um, I think you'll really enjoy it. And it'll give you all of the technical stuff that I don't know and can't answer. I will put the company website down below. So guys, that's the video. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I will see you next Sunday.